Hey folks, Matt from Weight Health Synergy. Today we are going to make some Hippocrates soup. Uh, for those of you that aren't familiar with Hippocrates soup, it's been around since the time of Hippocrates. It was actually Hippocrates that came up with the recipe. It's uh, a perfectly balanced soup, a uh, very healthy soup. Uh, for those of you that are familiar with the uh, Gerson therapy from Max Gerson, the therapy used for uh, curing cancer and other degenerative diseases, uh, it's, a, it's a pivotal part of that therapy, uh, but it's also just a really healthy, really good, and uh, quite tasty soup. Everybody in my family likes it, even my uh, three-year-old and my four-year-old. And my wife, she's a picky eater, she likes it too. Um, so it's really good. It's basically uh, tomatoes, potatoes, some leeks, onions, a little bit of parsley, and uh, some garlic. And what else do we have here? Onions. Oh, and some celery or celery root. This time of year we don't have celery root, so we're going to be using celery and um, a little bit of, uh, as I said, some parsley. So basically what we need to start off with is we're going to start off with um, our tomatoes. And uh, one of the things that the Gerson therapy stipulates for Hippocrates soup, which wouldn't have been a problem in the time of Hippocrates, but is a problem in our day and age, is that um, we want to... Um, try and use organic produce. Organic produce usually coming off uh, better land, better soil, so it has more nutrients in it and it hasn't been sprayed and full of all the chemicals and fertilizers. So uh, quite important to do that. However, here in Canada, I'm in Ontario, it is January and it's hard to get all organic produce sometimes, especially at a reasonable price. These are organic tomatoes. Um, they're they're uh, not the best looking tomatoes, but not too bad. So what we want to do is we want to kind of chop them up, take the cores out, and uh, we're going to chop them up, take out the stems or the cores, whatever you want to call it here. We'll remove those. And what you want with the tomatoes is you want a pound and a half of tomatoes. I'm going to bring my pot over here from the stove, and we'll start filling it uh, with our with our uh, produce, our vegetables, and I got my uh, compost bag here. So we're just going to chop these up, dice them up a bit so that they cook down nicely, and uh, mostly too so that we can fill the pot without you know large pieces um, creating um, a waste of space in the pot. So we can get everything into our pot here. Um, this is a four quart pot, and this is about perfect for this size of recipe. You can double it if you want. Um, I will list all the ingredients down below in the comments um, for those of you that missed them while we're doing this. But this is a pound and a half of tomatoes. And as I said, we're just cutting them up and then dicing them up, taking out the cores. One of the things that uh, really helps when you're um, working with uh, produce or any type of cooking is to work with a nice knife. And uh, to give a shout out to my mom, I got a new global um, knife for Christmas. This is Cromova 18 stainless steel made in Japan. Supposedly this technology of these knives is actually made from the um, samurai technology of how they folded the blades. And it, uh, I have to say this knife cuts very, very nicely. And uh, I quite like the, uh, the knife. So thanks again, mom. And... Um, just finish chopping up our one and a half pounds of tomatoes. For those of you that don't have a kitchen scale, uh, I highly recommend you get one because it's handy to have for the kitchen. But if you don't have one, a half, uh, one and a half pounds of tomatoes is approximately four um, kind of medium, not huge tomatoes, but you saw the size of those. And um, so next up, we have one pound of potatoes. Now I do have organic potatoes as well. My actual, my local Walmart um, has uh, very, been very good lately at bringing in um, organic produce. So that's been nice. Uh, I think most people have some mixed feelings about Walmart, but you can't beat the price. I think it was three pounds for $1.77. So not too bad at all. I'm just checking them out, looking at them here while I'm talking for make sure there's no blemishes or whatnot that I want to cut out. Um, and I've already, just so you know, I've already washed all of the produce in, uh, in some cool water with a scrubby and just scrubbed it down. Um, with organic, you don't have to worry so much about trying to use a soap or something like that. 
to, uh, to take anything off because you're mostly just trying to scrub off um, some um, any dirt or anything like that that might be on it because there's no pesticides on organic produce. So that's our pound of potatoes, one pound of potatoes. So we're at one and a half pounds of tomatoes, one pound of potatoes. Now, the recipe calls for a celery root or celeriac, I think uh, is how it's pronounced, celeriac. Um, those are often hard to come by, uh, especially at this time of year in Canada. And um, so what the alternate and the recipe does call for an alternate is, is to use three or four stalks of celery, which is what I have here, except for the organic celery I got is a small celery heart. I got two of them for $2.99 at our Zayers food store around here. And um, so basically, as you can see, it's fairly small celery. So I'm using the whole celery root, and this is basically um, eight stalks, but they're small, so you can you can look at it and think that it's about equivalent to using three or four large stalks. So I'm just going to uh, trim the ends off here. Just actually, I'm going to leave the ends on here because they look clean on the base end. I'm just going to uh, trim off the other ends where it's been cut previously because they do look like they're they're going a little um, a little frayed at the other end, a little withered. Um, so what we basically want to do is we want to chop up the celery into smaller pieces to put it into our soup, into our stock pot for our soup. So there we go, we've got our celery chopped up and we put it into the pan, into the pot I should say. So that's our celery, tomatoes, potatoes, and celery. And I do have some organic leeks. Now, I've had these for a little bit. They were on clearance because they were starting to look a little old, but I trimmed off the outsides, and I've already trimmed off the ends, and you can see they don't look too bad. One of the things you're gonna get if you're using leeks, um, if you can't find leeks, or you don't wanna use non-organic leeks, because regular leeks can often be very heavily sprayed with fungicides. So it's nice to get organic leeks. Um, but leeks, organic or non-organic, often come with a lot of dirt in them, just the way that they're grown. So you will find a little bit of dirt in the soup. If that bothers you, you can substitute another couple of regular medium onions instead of your leeks. For me, it's not really an issue. I give them a wash and soak. We try to get off as much as we can, but a little bit of dirt isn't gonna hurt anybody, especially when you're coming from organic grown. And uh, you know, when we're kids, everybody says, you're gonna eat a pound of dirt before you die or whatever the saying is. Anyways, as I said, if that's a problem for you, if that's an issue, if you're going, ew, dirt, then by all means, um, take more time and wash your leeks more thoroughly or substitute, the recipe does allow you to substitute, if you can't get leeks or don't wanna use leeks, two medium onions. We're already using two medium onions, so you wanna to go to four then if you're not using, um, if you're not gonna use leeks. I like leeks because leeks taste good. Um, I love the taste of leeks. They have a, a wonderful taste. Um, they're great for cooking in lots of other recipes. Um, my wife does a leek and brown rice and bacon uh, recipe, which is really good. Now, for those of you that are vegetarian or vegan, obviously, um, the bacon's not going to work for you, but you can factor in something else if you want to try a recipe like that. But it's very tasty, and that really brings out the flavor of the leeks in that uh, recipe there. Um, so I like to use them. They're not always readily available or at a, at a good price. I mean, sometimes organic leeks can be five or six bucks for a bunch. And by the time you assemble all your vegetables, it starts to get very costly. So at that point, I would be switching over to a couple onions instead of the leeks. Now, next up, we've got uh, our leeks in there and we're gonna use our onions. So we've got two medium onions. Now these onions actually aren't, are not organic, but as far as on the list of heavily sprayed, heavily pesticided um, vegetables, fruits and vegetables, onions are very low on that list. I think it's because they're, they probably don't have a lot of natural predators to begin with, and they also um, are grown obviously underground. So um, for whatever various reasons, they are low on our list of um, pesticides as far as um, fruits and vegetables are concerned. So I don't worry too much about using non-organic onions if I don't have uh, organic onions. That said, 
Usually organic onions aren't too bad a price. Um, I just didn't happen to see them when I was out today getting my, uh, my supplies for this. So it just depends. You know, if you're, if you're watching this and you're living in California, I'm envious of you because most likely you have a really good supply of organic fruit and vegetables year round pretty much, um, which is fantastic. I wish I had that. Um, for those of us that live in colder climates, you get into winter and uh, not only is our regular fruits and vegetables and our produce go up in price, but our organic stuff goes uh, through the roof as far as cost is concerned. But one of the other major reasons for buying organic is it's one of the, the few ways that you can fight the, uh, the um, genetically modified food uh, corporations, Monsanto and the rest of them. You can, um, you know, you're basically voting with your shopping dollar. And yes, even though it's more expensive, in the end, that's going to be the cheapest way and the healthiest way for you because you're eating organic food but you're telling them, no, I won't buy your genetically modified foods. I'm going to shop organic that I, that I know isn't genetically modified. And, um, and in the end, you're, you're saying no to them uh, in, the, in one of the strongest ways you can, and that's by not buying their products. If everybody did that, then uh, Monsanto and them would stop making this, these awful genetically modified foods. So, which is a whole other topic. We can debate that another time, but obviously you can tell I'm against genetically modified foods. Um, I think the Europeans have it right there. Okay, so we've got our two medium uh, onions in there. I've got my uh, my uh, Gerson Therapy book, which is actually on my iPad for Kindle, or on my iPhone in the Kindle. And I'm just going to check, make sure we got everything. We got our celery. We need some parsley, so I still have to do that. One and a half pounds of tomatoes, two medium onions. Um, and it calls for a medium parsley root, uh, but it does say rarely available, omit if not. I haven't seen a parsley root in some time. So if you can get them where you are, great. You can throw it in. I don't have it, so I'm just omitting it. Two small leeks. We've got that. We've got organic ones. Um, and again, two additional medium onions if you don't have the leeks or don't want to use leeks. Um, several cloves of garlic. We've got to put that in. And a pound of potatoes. Our potatoes are in here. So what we still need right now is we need our um, parsley. And what I'm going to use for parsley today is uh, Italian parsley or cilantro, depending on what you want to call it. Some people call it both things, and um, we're gonna put a good a good shot of this in here. I really like um, cilantro, so I'm gonna use a fair bit of it here. So. Just gonna trim it up, and uh, you can use regular parsley. That's actually what it calls for. Um, I usually put cilantro in whenever I see a recipe that calls for parsley, because uh, cilantro or Italian parsley, as we call it, um, is just absolutely wonderful. It it smells just amazing, and actually, after you're done cutting it up, your hands tend to smell like it for a while. And I just love the smell of it. So we're gonna just chop up this here. that in. You can see our stock pot here, our four quart is starting to get pretty full, but that's okay. We'll stir it in and this will just fit. I know this from uh, past experience that it fits quite nicely. So, and what we can do at this point too, is I will take, what we do is we top this up so it's just covered with water and, um, and then when we go to cook it, we'll bring it out. What you do is you bring it to a slow boil. Um, well, you basically cook it for two to two and a half hours on a slow heat. So I bring it on a slow boil. Sometimes I, I turn it up to begin with just to get the water heated up quickly. And then I let it simmer for about two and a half hours. Um, the point that Max Gerson made um, in the Gerson therapy is that slower cooking tends to be better and preserve more of the nutrients in um, your vegetables when you're cooking under a slower, more steady, slow, low heat. So we're going to use some um, we're going to use some water here to top it up. We've got uh, RO reverse osmosis filtered water. Sorry, I don't know if you heard that over pouring the water, but this is RO water, reverse osmosis water. 
we have a, a system in the house here. That's what we drink with and cook with. Um, so you want to use either pure water or uh, RO water, whatever you're getting for your pure water. And you want to add, usually I find with this recipe, it's uh, six to eight cups is about what it takes to top it up. So we're just going to fill this up here again. And I'm just going to top it up. I just keep an eye on the water line. We just, you basically just want enough water to cover your vegetables. So um, you can put a full eight cups in. It'll take it in a in a in an eight quart. That's actually what we're going to do here. That was a full eight cups. So all we have left now is we need to do some garlic. And um, it's my my bad. I do not have organic garlic. That's one of the other things I don't have. Now garlic can be heavily sprayed, and I probably should have some organic garlic. Um, but where I was at this morning for groceries, we did not have organic garlic. So we are stuck without organic garlic. And um, again, you, you could make this without organic vegetables. And I, I mean, obviously, I, I recommend getting organic if you can. But it's still going to be a healthier meal using non-organic vegetables than if you were eating, you know, junk food and as opposed to this really healthy vegetable soup. So, if you can't get, um, I'm just going to peel my garlic here. If you can't get organic vegetables, um, by all means, you can still make the soup. It's just not going to be, um, you know, as peace of mind of knowing that you're not uh, putting in all the pesticides. So, or if you're somebody that doesn't believe in organic, which I find impossible to believe, um, then you can make it and it's still, it's still a healthy soup. Um, certainly healthier than anything you're going to buy out of a can or get at a restaurant. Um, it's just not going to be organic vegetables, and um, that is up to you. So what we want to do, for those of you that don't know how to um, to work with garlic, you want to uh, separate out your cloves, and then what you do with garlic to get the best flavor out of garlic when you're cooking, and also to uh, to deshell them or dehusk them, whatever you want to call that, is you take the, the broad side of your knife and you just crush the clove of garlic and then the garlic clove pops right out of there and your skin comes right off. And you can do a couple at a time here. Just pops right off. Looks like I've had this garlic maybe if it's starting to get a little old. I got a little bit of a, a shoot growing on the end of it. We'll just trim that off. You see how the skin just pops right off when you give it a crush. Not only does it help the skin come off, though, it really activates the flavor. Crushing it really brings out the flavor when you're cooking. So you just use the broad side of the knife, the palm of your hand, and give it a crush. Be careful. You don't want to cut yourself. And watch you writing in and saying, hey, I followed your recipe and I cut myself. You know, it's like anything else when you're cooking. You cut yourself with a knife. It's your fault. <laughs> So be careful, folks. So we've get, we're getting, uh, I'm going to go with the whole clove. You can put in six or eight pieces. You can put in whatever you want. We really like garlic, and this recipe um, takes the garlic very nicely. It doesn't, uh, doesn't overpower it, even with the whole clove. Um, and I guess that also depends on your garlic. Some garlic is stronger than others, but uh, we don't have any problem putting in a whole clove. And I know that from experience. I've started with... Just a few, a few pieces, and um, we found out that it wasn't enough. We both, both my wife and I were wanting more. So you, um, you adapt as you go. And the recipe basically calls for, for as much garlic as you want. Uh, what you're doing with this recipe is it's very low sodium. We don't add any salt or anything, uh, especially if you're doing this. If you were following the, the Gerson therapy for cancer or another degenerative disease, one of his primary principles was um, a sodium-potassium imbalance is a lot to do with why you might be ill. So um, 
really reduced sodium, and actually he'd take, he would prescribe uh, potassium supplements to get the balance right, get your electrolytes and everything right back in your body. So there is no salt in this, um, in this um, recipe. Now, I mean, that doesn't, by all means, if you wanted to add some, um, if that wasn't an issue for you and you weren't bothered by that, you certainly could. Um, but if you're following the Gerson techniques, and actually we don't, it tastes really good as is without salt. I shouldn't say that. My wife might actually add a little bit to hers, but I never add salt to it. It's actually got a wonderful flavor as is, just made with all these lovely fresh vegetables. Not as fresh probably as summer, but still all these fresh, nutrient-rich vegetables. And then we just dice up our garlic, chop it up. And as you can see, that's a fair bit of garlic. If you don't like garlic, you don't have to add it. If you like garlic, you can put in as much as I'm doing or more. And if you just like a little bit, feel free just to put a little bit in. Grab a cooking spoon here. And basically, it's at uh, water levels right about perfect. It's just covering without putting too much water in here. And I'm just kind of tamping everything down in here. Lovely. Give my hands a rinse. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take this uh, the four quart pot. We're going to move it over to the stove. Over there, we're going to cover it. And I'm going to turn this up to uh, just below a high heat. And um, basically what I'm going to do is bring up the, the temperature so that we get it to close to, I'm not going to bring it to a raging boil, but just by turning it up initially, then it'll bring the temperature up um, so that we're at like a slow boil. And I'm going to catch it before it gets really going. And then I'm going to turn it back down and let it simmer for two and a half hours. And then at that point, what we do is you can either put it through a, um, I use a blender. I use my Vitamix, which is over here. And uh, I put it through the Vitamix and blend it so we have like a nice, like the consistency of like a potato soup, like a, uh, almost like a creamy soup, but there's no cream in here. Um, you can also put it through something like a Champion food processor, um, the, the, uh, the Champion um, juicer that you put the, the sleeve in and then, and then it just kind of masticates things. Um, I find the blender is just super easy. Or you don't even have to blend it. The, the original, or I should say the Gerson therapy recipe calls to, to, uh, to blend it up type thing or masticate it um, into like a, like a, a thick, creamier soup. But um, I know when my mom makes this and she really likes it, she just leaves the vegetables as is. And it's just a nice broth, vegetable broth with all the whole vegetables in there. And that's the way she likes to eat it. So up to you. So we're going to let this simmer. For, uh, we're going to bring this to a boil, a slow boil, and then I'll let it simmer for two and a half hours, and then uh, we will have the soup, and all we have to do at that point is to put it in, what I'm going to do is put it in my Vitamix blender, my big jug, um, with this quantity of soup, it's going to take me about four big jugs to get it all blended up, and uh, then we're ready to go. Uh, what I usually do is I keep the soup in the fridge for two to three days. Uh, by then, we've usually ate it all. If I think it's going to be longer than that, then I freeze some of it. I put it in a one uh, liter, one quart mason jar. We make sure you leave some headroom, and then it freezes okay in the freezer. It um, doesn't taste quite as good as fresh, but it's certainly really good, really healthy soup, and uh, very welcome on these cold winter days. Thanks for tuning in, folks. Stay tuned to Weight Health Synergy. We'll be back with some more great recipes and uh, some articles, things that are going on in the health world, and uh, we'll keep you up to date uh, with weight health synergy. Thanks a lot.